My name is Danny. I'm a wildlife photographer and I name squirrels. Ghost, Chiburashka, Little One, Timo, Mama, Mojo, Dada Elf, Moomin, Remy, and this Hello, baby pear. is Baby Pear. This is the story of how I rescued four baby squirrels and befriended a family of wild squirrels in northern Sweden. In March, I arrived to a winter wonderland. The ground was covered in blankets of white. And the trees delicately lined in snow. The temperatures in northern Sweden regularly drop to a biting minus 30 Celsius. As a wildlife photographer, I followed several species closely. But there was one animal I became particularly fond of. The red squirrel. With exaggerated ear tufts, a charismatic personality, and an adorable face, it is difficult not to fall in love with them. The animals that live here are well adapted for life in the freezer, with thick winter coats, white plumage, and strategies for surviving winter. Some species migrate, some hibernate, and others, like the squirrels, rely on food stored before winter. As the days get longer and the snow begins to melt away, their red coat below begins to show. Winter is almost over. Spring. The forest was alive with sound, and the red squirrels were red. The squirrels have eaten their cached winter food, and with the snow gone, they are busy foraging. Not only were the squirrels busier, but the road was too. There were more cars driving through the village, and Remy was unlucky. Remy was a female red squirrel, and somewhere in the forest she had kits. After saying farewell to her, I sat and watched the forest, when suddenly I saw something red in the grass. It was a tiny baby red squirrel. The baby squirrel ran up a tree, and I then waited seven hours to see if any adult squirrels would go up the tree, but no adult squirrels went up the tree. The baby squirrel was alone. 
and I was confident this was Remy's baby. I spoke to several wildlife rescues and I was told this squirrel kit was too young to survive without its mother. It needed rearing in captivity, but how was I going to capture a seven week old baby red squirrel? The following morning, I returned to the forest. I waited hours and nothing. But then I saw not one, not two, but three baby red squirrels. I was so happy to discover the kits had teeth and they were able to eat on their own. Maybe they could survive without a squirrel mum. From that day onwards, I spent four to six hours every day waiting and watching in the first couple of days, the squirrels stayed close to the tree of the dray and were only active for a few hours. They spent most of that time eating and would often fall asleep. After a few days, I was able to identify each of the baby squirrels. I was told squirrels love fruit, and so I chopped a pear into small pieces. And one baby squirrel, who was also the most confident, showed a particular fondness for pear. And so I named him Baby Pear. The smallest and lightest coloured I called Baby Moomin and a crimson red baby squirrel with large eyes and circular ears I named Chiborashka after the Russian cartoon. As I spent more time with the squirrels they became more comfortable around me. I did not need to wait hours for them, as I could now call them down with my voice. As soon as they knew it was me, they'd come straight down from the trees. Hello baby pet. How are you? going to have an argument, I know it. Oh, really? You're about to witness a fight. Watch this. They're not fighting. Fight, fight, yeah. Baby fight. Oh my goodness. <laughs> 
babies. <laughs> That's so good. So many baby squirrels in shot and all you can see is tail. And it was on this day that I discovered there were in fact four baby red squirrels. Meet Little Flame. I've been following the baby squirrels for two weeks now and they are exploring more of the forest. This increased activity is important for muscle growth and learning how to navigate through the forest. Although they do not realise this, and for them it's a load of fun. The baby squirrels also spend a lot of time chasing each other around trees. Although this is playful, they are learning how to assert their dominance for when they need to protect their future territory. Squirrels do observe their peers and learn behaviour. But most of their behaviour is instinctive, such as caching. This is when animals take food and bury it for the future when food might be scarce. Another important aspect in the growth and development of the baby squirrels was play fighting. This is important for establishing relationships. Red squirrels are solitary mammals, but territories will often overlap. I noticed even in the adults that the squirrels had allies or friends. Baby Pear and Chiborashka in particular began to spend a lot of time together. They would play fight frequently and have arguments over a piece of fruit. In the end, the piece of pear was usually forgotten about. Despite minor disputes, they were almost always together.
It's early July. The baby squirrels are now 11 weeks old. I am starting to spend less time in the forest. Baby squirrels. But Baby Pear and Chiborashka recognise my call and come to me almost immediately. Red squirrel mortality is as high as 70% in their first year. Predators, domestic cats, the road and even deforestation are all threats for these baby squirrels. Unfortunately, baby Moomin and little flame disappeared. They may have started to explore wider areas of the forest, but it is also likely that they were predated. When I discovered the baby squirrels were alive, I didn't expect any to survive. Baby Pear and Chiborashka are doing well. They have grown a lot and are starting to find their own food. I have reduced feeding to encourage natural foraging. Even though I stopped providing fruit, Baby Pear continues to get his dose by stealing my apple and pear. The squirrels have provided me with so much joy, as well as taught me about patience and perseverance in order to keep them alive. But they also taught me the importance of forming connections with individual wild animals. Biophilia is the hypothesis that humans have an innate urge to connect with other forms of life. But I do wonder whether animals seek a connection with humans, especially when helpless and desperate. After spending over 100 hours in the forest with these baby squirrels, I do feel strongly connected to these animals. Why did that tiny baby squirrel climb down the tree? He would have seen me, heard me, smelt me, and yet it knew I was not a threat. But they are wild animals. The forest is their home, and they are old enough to survive without me. After five months in northern Sweden, it is time for me to leave and say goodbye to my squirrel family, but I'll be back soon. In early November, it was announced the UK would enter its second lockdown, and I had the opportunity to travel back to Sweden. A negative COVID test and an overnight layover at the airport.
I was back in the forest. I was on a mission to find Baby Pear again. He has spent more of his life now without me. At seven months old, he would have established his own territory. But would he have left the forest? Could I find him again? Did he even survive? If Baby Pear is out there, his home is about to look very different. The landscape transformed overnight. Winter is here again. I was visiting the squirrel forest every day, but I couldn't seem to find anyone. After several days, I got my first glimpse of the squirrels, but they were nervous. They hadn't seen many people in six months. It continued to snow heavily, with the temperature dropping and the ground frozen. Most of the squirrel's cached food was buried under snow. But I had peanuts, so the squirrels got busy. The squirrels got used to me quickly, and I recognised both of them, Dada Elf and Ghost. I knew both of these squirrels in the summer. Ghost was given his name after his quiet, and secretive personality. Dada Elf is the only adult squirrel the baby squirrels tolerated. If there was another adult squirrel nearby, they would disappear into the dry tree. This suggested he might have been the father of the baby squirrels. That and his angled ear tufts gave him his name Dada Elf. Every day I would visit the squirrel forest, hoping to find the baby squirrels. I was running out of time, but Ghost and Dada Elf continued to keep me company.
I visited the squirrel forest daily for three weeks, and each day I went to see the dry tree where the baby squirrels were born. But there was no sign of any baby squirrels. Until the day I didn't go to the forest, I stayed at home, and when I opened the curtains one morning, I saw this, a very small young red squirrel. When I opened the window to see if I could take any photos, it didn't run away. And when I walked outside to get closer, it still didn't run away. As soon as I saw the squirrel, I knew who it was, and his behavior proved to me it was Baby Pear. Despite all odds, Baby Pear had survived. Although he had been kicked out of the forest he was born in, he had found a home elsewhere. And then, to my amazement, I saw another young squirrel. It was Chiburashka. They had both survived. When I arrived to Sweden, I had no idea I would develop such a strong connection towards these animals. After spending so many hours in the forest with these squirrels, I was able to identify each of them and understand their different personalities and behaviours. But it was fascinating to discover the connections these animals have with each other. Very early on, I discovered Baby Pear and Chiburashka were allies. Ghost and Dada Elf would frequently travel through the trees together. Maybe we don't realise and acknowledge the connections these animals have for each other. Because after all these months, Baby Pear and Chiburashka have stayed together. Baby pear, that's what they're called, the little ones called baby, baby pear. pear. And yeah, it's, it is, it's one of those absolutely magical moments where human and animal inter interconnect and it just happens to be one of the cutest animals, honestly. I have been working with red squirrels around the house in Sweden. It didn't take me long to find the baby red squirrels. 